Hey, and welcome to Running It Back. I'm Patrick Ramirez, and this is my show. Episode 5 today, and it came out great. I think with each one, they get a little better and better. So thank you to all those who listened, all who watched, and all who listened and watched. Yeah, I guess you can do that. Today on the show, Franklin Yee is back. This makes the first episode where the guest suggested the subject to rewatch. And we got into it, and boy did we get off the rails a little bit. I think you'll enjoy. I had something funny happen with Frank a few months back that I thought I would share before the episode. We were going to a taping of a comedy show. We were going to be in the audience. And I show up by myself and intending to just hang out with Frank, but Frank shows up with about eight members of his family. And it was funny because I sat right in the middle of all of them during the show. And at one point, a few of us got up to go to the bar, and I get to the counter, and I see the sign, and it says, Cash Only. Of course, I didn't have any cash. And in my panic, Frank's brother jumps in and says, Oh, I got it. He got my beer. Save me in the counter. So Frank's brother, I owe you a beer. Today we talk about the 2006 Rose Bowl, USC versus Texas, known as the Vince Young game. We dissect, we talk about favorites, curious parts of the game, and of course, we turn it into a movie by the end of it. 2006 Rose Bowl, here's me and Frank. Where are you? You're in your car? I'm in my car right now, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm not at the house. Usually uh, around this time, um, I just have to find somewhere to go. My parents are like, you got to go. <laughs> <Can't be here." laughs> well, uh, for this, uh, I got to say for this episode, you brought up this idea to me for this game. So this is the first idea suggestion on my little Zoom series. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, interested to dive into this. You were giving me some thoughts on this, and I had all these questions. I was like, oh, I better save this for the conversation. Nice. For uh, well, Frank, so, so you know. Were you, were you in Seattle back then, or were you in L.A. around 2006? Ah, well, 2006. I mean, we're talking 2006. We're going to talk Rose Bowl 2006 for this one. I was living in... Let's see, 2006, I was living in Salt Lake City. I see, I see. I might have been, yeah, I might have had just moved there. So, yeah, I watched this game probably on television somewhere in an apartment. But, wow. yeah, we're, we're talking we're talking 2006 Rose Bowl, USC versus Texas, or like, as we all know it, the Vince Young coming out party touchdown. Definitely. Game. It, it was weird because um, I, I did my homework on it, and um, – they actually had um, an NFL Network special on this game. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because all the people you did, you that did like, do your homework. Yeah, it was good because all the all all the guys that got drafted from this game, all bust. Yeah, they, good they, point. They didn't do good in the NFL at all. <laughs> so take me back because you're LA guy. This is heyday of USC. So They're going see, for the three peat. They'd won two previous national championships. And you watched this game in LA. Where'd you watch this game? I watched it in Santa Monica at a Hooters. And then the bar got so packed that, you know, like they're, they're just like, they needed tables and they kept on making us buy drinks. And we're just college kids. So we just ended up going to a Best Buy and we watched the fourth quarter in a Best Buy on a bunch you of big screens. Like, like you watch it on the TVs, like that they sell. We watched it on the TVs. <laughs> we went to the Best Buy when there was, I guess, a, maybe a Circuit City, even when there's those around, even. And then, you know, flat screen TVs just came out at the time. So there's just like flat screen TVs everywhere. It wasn't like how it is now where everyone just had a flat, just a flat screen TV. Back then, it's like you couldn't even get one. Right. Yeah. 2006 flat screen was a big was a big deal. Like not everybody had them. Some people had a flat screen, but it had a really deep back to it. Or yeah, you, so it was not or all, you had to wait all in house. Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> you know, we go Black Friday. And were other people watching the game in, in uh, Best Buy? Were you the only ones? I don't quite remember other people. I was with a party of like eight. And, um, I, and then um, I remember all the workers were watching us. And the workers were just like, the workers are watching it too. They're like, watch, watch. And we actually, I actually sat down like on, my, on the floor. And I just watched the whole fourth quarter inside the Best Buy. And they had the sound on too? Had the sound on too. Every everyone was watching it back, like because in 2006, everyone was so used to the Lakers winning, and then that's that was probably I think that was the year Shaq got traded in Miami, or Shaq was already in Miami and Kobe was by himself, and the Lakers sucked. Mm -hmm. and, and then the Dodgers weren't good, so like everyone, just, you know, LA, they just want. I mean, not LA, but just the world in general. Like they always like to root for a winner. So USC yeah. was killing it. So everyone was like, "Oh, USC." USC. USC was the LA team. They were like the team. Yeah, because we uh we didn't have Lakers, we didn't have basketball, we have no football, and then but we had college. We had college USC. Yeah, and then that, that was like that was the game, you know. Uh, Going for the three P. It was cool on the on the rewatch because the rewatch is perfect, you know, perfect quality because it's not that long ago, it's two thousand six. So I did the rewatch on it, and in my my deep internet research, I found a couple of things already. First thing I found on deep internet research, 15 of the 22 USC starters are California guys, and 20 of the 22 Texas starters are Texas guys. So this was wow. like a true, true California versus Texas game. And then this is Lane Kiffin's first game as the offensive coordinator for USC. Real? I found out too. Yeah, Norm Chow had left. And then he jumps in. So he's taking over. So in the end, if you're a USC guy, you could potentially blame Lane Kiffin for this loss. There's a lot of things I think. <laughs> what did uh so you rewatched it, what surprised you on the rewatch? Um, one was like um the Notre Dame game actually, before because if they didn't win that Notre Dame game, they wouldn't have made it to the Rose Bowl. And they barely beat Notre Dame too. That and to me that was like Probably the second greatest college game I've ever seen next to this. Oh, one. so you went back and actually watched the game previous to the Rose. They had like a one-hour special on NFL Network. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll beep it out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it was just crazy too, cause like um, it was just typical LA thing, you know. Like we thought we didn't even respect Texas, you know. Like everyone was like, oh, it's right. a W. It's going to be a blowout, you know. It was definitely That's thought that we were going to walk through and get the three P. Yeah. It was a little bit of a formality. The other thing I liked about this game is I just love the uniform contrast. Texas is in all white. USC's got the dark maroon colors. I love the good uniform contrast. It looks good on the screen, too. Yeah. It was great. You know, Two classic they did, schools. They did it right. Yeah. Then, um, I remember um, – it's funny because, like, I remember the last time I thought, like, a sure thing was going to happen was when um, – Trump went against Hillary. I didn't even oh, think that right. was seriously. I was like, it was like the USC thing. I was like, ah, there's no way Trump will win, you know? We Hillary got it. This. USC yeah, is going to win exactly like states. The same thing. <laughs> and, then, and then you watch it, you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh. How's right, that right. <laughs> About the third quarter, like, wait a second. Definitely. Yeah. Then, yeah, the rewatch. What, uh... What also like sort of like surprised me on the rewatch, I forgot Vince Young's touchdown run is on fourth down. It's like a total yeah. like this is the game play. I totally forgot that part. I was like, whoa, total pressure. The guy comes through with like a 12 yard run on fourth down. There was so, no time left, you know? Was, yeah, it was their last play. I think they could have got a first down, but it was, yeah, I think they were down to like 20 seconds. And then last uh, thing, like say that surprised me, what did you notice on the down fouls Keith Jackson call? Because it sounded like an uh, uh, like a nephew talking to his old uncle for that <laughs> game. Keith Jackson is all over the place in this game. He's two plays behind every detail. At one point, they show the Rose Bowl, and he goes, it gets cold at night in L.A. and then warms up during the day. That was his <laughs> intro. <laughs> hey, that's not, those are classic lines right there, man. Yeah, yeah, I was laughing at it. Poor Dan Fouts is having to put back every play from the mess that Keith Jackson made. And as it turns out, this was Keith Jackson's last game as an announcer. So 
I give him a little. He, he went out. He went out on this game. But yeah, it was funny. He just was behind every play. Wow, well, look at you too. Because when you think about college games, like when USC was winning, there were always blowouts. It was never close, right? Yeah, they showed some stat, and I, I didn't look it up, but I, I couldn't believe it, where they showed, like, Texas's average points per game and USC's average points per game were, like, 50 points or something. I was yeah. like, that's, that can't be right. I didn't even bother to look it up, but I was like, I guess it could be right. There's a high, high scoring offense and on there. You, you remember after, too, they got in trouble with the Reggie Bush scandal and stuff like that? Right, right. Yep, this was the total end of the USC era, so – um, what else did I have for my notes here? Um, oh, the first drive of the game. Here's the epitome of USC. The first drive of the game. They go three and out. They punt it. Texas fumbles the punt. USC gets it. They get a good play. They get a penalty, and they score a touchdown. That was the epitome of USC football. They always like found a way to kind of like get points, extend a drive, kind of like Lakers back in the day were like, they could be down 14 in the fourth quarter, and you'd be like, yeah, they're probably still going to win. Yeah. See? Typical, we're typical LA guys, cocky. You know, we're like, all right. Yeah, they were like, yeah, they get a bullet off. See, they, they got the punt back. So let's, uh, let's go to the categories for the game. Okay. First category, your favorite part of the game. Sort of respect the uh, respect the game. I can respect the game, but when when I rewatch the game too, like this, this, we were talking about how like um how like Reggie Bush got in trouble and stuff like that. And Pete Carroll, you remember he just left right after the right, allegation. Right, right. Some, mm-hmm. some things were like fishy to me. Like, like why would Reggie Bush throw a lateral? Like he's just oh, like, we're so we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Yeah. Okay. I wanna, I wanna hear some thoughts on that. So you're, yeah. So you actually like the the text, the the Vince Young run Vince uh, as your favorite part. That's well, what made it the greatest. That's one of the well, greatest it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of funny is too because we were both rooting for USC. My my favorite part too is also a Texas moment. There's that play when Liner throws the throws a ball into the end zone and the Texas guy intercepts it and gets a foot down in bounds and they're like, oh, it's an interception. I was like, oh, this is the game. This is the game on right now. Texas brought it. So that's my favorite part when when Texas intercepts the ball in the end zone. Ah, nice. Oh, they they came to play. Uh, okay, second category. Okay, post game worries in LA. Was there anything to be worried about USC losing this game in LA? Ah, uh, there was, there was, you know, because you wanted to see the three feet. Yeah. And, then, and plus, that's all we had. That's all we had. And but to be honest with you, uh, this was college. Uh, one one thing I never got was why Matt Liner. I don't think Matt Liner should have came back. This was Matt Liner's been. fifth year, right? Yeah. I think right. he should have went to the NFL. He would have got drafted number one with the Niners that year. Would he have gone to the Niners? I don't remember the team's line for. And instead he Alex went to Phoenix, right? He ended up going to – his stock dropped after this game. Well, if you think about it, if his, if he never had a good NFL career, he should have went like a six-year of uh, USC football. Why not, right? Could he have gone to like – could he have been like a TA? And still, uh, still play football. What about that? I mean, um, well, it was funny because when you watch the NFL thing um, with Vince Young and and uh, Matt Leiner, they're talking about like how they didn't respect the NFL. They thought, you know, because they're so there's just big shots in college. They thought like the NFL is just gonna be easy, mm-hmm. and that's why they that's why they stunk in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see Matt Leiner. <laughs> This gives me an idea. What if Matt Liner became like the Van Wilder of college football? Like he was like, you know, he kept deferring his degree, but he had like a little bit of eligibility. What if he came down to like he just had two weeks of eligibility at a time, but he just kept milking it because he didn't want to leave college. He seems like that kind of guy. Too. He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna stick it out. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a winter semester here. Play play a couple games. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about the pitch. Second quarter. 
Reggie Bush pops off a big run and then he inexplicably pitches the ball to a teammate who doesn't know the ball's coming to him. Uh, where do you stand on that pitch? That that play drives me nuts. I, I think I think he got paid off. I think it's Vegas. So this is where you base the conspiracy theory on. That's 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 the beginning, and then like, and then like in the fourth quarter when they needed that one down, and then they don't put Reggie on the field with Lindale White. Right. So you see the pitch because I watched the pitch and I'm like, because it's in the second quarter, I'm like, oh, this is. This is USC showboating. They got all the speed. They got all the skill. And uh, Reggie Bush has got to pitch it after 30 yards. And I was like, oh, this is just showboating. But you think it's deeper. You think it's conspiracy. I think so. And then, like, if you watch that fourth quarter, Vince Young, they had the face mask thing on that. Uh, yes, Vince I remember that. Saying, Vince Young saying if that face mask didn't happen, it would be They'd over. Get him a first down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering about – and then – why would, wanna, why, why would Reggie Bush want to? Why would Reggie Bush want to want to lose the game? What do you say? I don't know. Uh, maybe he got paid off. Maybe <laughs> this is an odd like, conspiracy theory, Frank. Or maybe like they're going to threaten to like ruin him and stuff like that, which it happened anyway. You know. Mm. You know what I mean? So, maybe I don't know. Maybe they're going to kill his family. Some shit, you know. <laughs> deep. Dude, you know? I don't know. Deep. Do we know the stats on Reggie Bush's game? Was he having a good game or an average game? Maybe he, he had was... a horrible game. Yeah, so maybe maybe you have something here. It was all they had to put Lindell White in there because Reggie was just fucking up. You know, Lindell White. Uh, White was having a great game. Yeah, yeah. You're right. hmm. His stock. If he would get that first down, his, his, his stock would have been up too. Hmm, okay, so maybe there's something deeper with the pitch uh, to it because it was very, uh, it wasn't completely out of character for him to do that, but it was out of like out of the blue with that run. So kind know. of very weird. Maybe it was a conspiracy. Maybe, maybe we can make a hmm. movie out of it, right? <laughs> We're making our way. Ready, okay. Ready for Reggie Bush. <laughs> well, funny you say that because the next category is casting this game. So we'll make this game into a movie and you got to cast it. And then we got to rewrite the game right. into a movie. So I really only have two two um, characters that I would cast are my main guys. And then I took my movie a completely different way. But I got a character for Pete Carroll and a character for Vince Young. Those are my two only main characters from from the uh, from the from the game. So I got to play Pete Carroll, Sam Rockwell. Ah, that's good. Right, right. You see it? And then to play Vince Young, Bill Bellamy. And I looked up Bill Bellamy. Bill Bellamy's 6'4", so he could do this. He and then all you got to do, do is just shave the head and have the big hairline and stuff with it. Mm -hmm. It could right. work. Right. Yeah, yeah. Who are your characters for the, for the recasting? It's funny. I like Matt Leinard seems like he would be an easy cast in Hollywood, right? Yeah, yeah. Who would you cast for Matt Leinard? It was funny you mentioned Ryan Reynolds. I was thinking, like, and you're talking about Van Wilder. I was like, maybe Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds would be good. I was thinking, like, an Ashton Kutcher could be a good Matt Leinard, too. That would be a good one. I mean, I feel like they're, I'm, I'm missing the boat on the Matt, Matt Leinard one because there should, there should be a lot, of, a lot of people that could play that role. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Kind of like the uh, athletic. Uh, how old was Matt Leiter? Like twenty three at the time. Twenty three <laughs> at the time. There could be a few. So we got to think maybe. Uh, who, who's 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 the young star right now? Thank you. What about? I'm gonna throw out a couple names. You see what you think. I'm gonna throw some wild cards. Okay, for Matt Leiter. What about? What about Justin Timberlake? That could work. Too short. That's one. Okay. But it's, right. it's a movie, though. It's a movie. Okay. Well, well, All right. Well, okay. Here's one from uh, – here's a wild card. Emil Hirsch. I don't know who that is. <laughs> he was in some stuff. He was in uh, – he was in, in, in Into the Wild. Did you ever see that movie where he's like uh, – who lives in the forest? All right. Okay. We'll what, put him on the What about the kids that played Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man? Um, he's too short, though. Huh? The English guy? Yeah. Oh, I don't know where you're going with this one, Frank. English yeah. guy is all American QB. No, but he, he, he <laughs> got to throw you out of that you know. parking lot. How dare you, <laughs> sir? <laughs> okay. 
How about before we before we rewrite the movie? Okay, you can recall that fourth down play. It's fourth down. I think it's fourth and two. USC's got the ball on the 50. There's two minutes left, and they give the ball to Lendell White. He doesn't get it. Okay, you're the offensive coordinator. Recall that play. You can either run the same play, you can give it to Reggie Bush, or you can punt. What are you going to call? I run the same play, but I would have Reggie Bush in there as a decoy. Okay, so they did, they did a single back and gave it to Lindell. You're saying then, two of them in. Just that's, that's the way you got to go through it because their explaining was the reason why they went for it was they knew they could not stop Vince Young. They knew if Vince Young was going to have the ball, then it would be over, which makes sense. But, like, even in, that, uh, in the documentary, they're complaining, like, how come you didn't put Reggie in at least for, you know, like a decoy, a, a little something. Everyone knew Lendell was going to get the ball. Yeah. I agree with you. I want to go for it. Because the previous drive, Vince Young was already running all over him. So I agree you go for it. But I would have liked to have seen a play-action pass. I was about to say you – Might as right well go you. for it. Yeah, might as well go for it. The, the – Go for the play. Maybe you get points. Maybe you don't. But, yeah, the Lendo White, I, I have no problem with the call because he was having a good game. They just happened to not get it. Play but action fake would actually would been actually the right play. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you remember a year ago, they sort of did something like that in the Notre Dame game in South Bend where they have the famous fourth down play. So maybe something like that. If I'm to recall, if I'm in the offensive coordinator position, True. Said, let's go, let's go for it. Let's go for it. If we turn it over, we don't lose any yards anyway, and we give it don't a make shot. It so simple, right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's my recall. But I have no problem with with handing it off to Lendell White. He was having a good game. Hey, um, I was gonna say for my cast for uh, Reggie Bush, I was gonna say Michael B. Jordan. Oh yeah, definitely. I like that call for him. We need to. Well, let's let's get into it right now. Then let's rewrite the movie, and um. And make it a movie. If you remember, last time you and I did this, I, I turned the Kurt Gibson home run into a Disney movie. And uh. I was thinking, I'm going another route this time. I'm going a totally different route. I'm going a movie, uh, a movie where this game is almost kind of in the background. Okay, so you got the Rose Bowl, but there's a international kind of secret agent, and he's got to get these stolen Russian plans up to uh, up to a satellite link, but the satellite is on top of the Rose Bowl. So he has to get into the Rose Bowl and upload these files. And this is 2006, right? It's 2006. So he's doing the thing in every kind of movie with a crowd where it's like to blend in from the Russians. He grabs a USC hat and puts it on and tries to blend in with the crowd, you know, through the concession stand. Wow. And then, uh, but at some point, he has to accidentally walk into like a VIP green room. And it's 2006. So say he walks into a VIP green room, and it's like the cast of Entourage, like <laughs> watching the game. And he's like, oh, what's up, guys? Just passing through. Go Trojans, right? So yeah, and for my guy to uh, be the international spy, I cast Michael Sarah. Just uh, he's kind of the, he's the dorky spy. Yeah, yeah. I'm going a totally different route with my movie. And uh, I'm gonna name I'm naming this movie Audible. Audible? <laughs> yeah, what do you think? <laughs> might be some yeah, holes like in the it. plot. Might be some holes in the plot right now. Hey, that's what rewrites are for. It ain't a script unless you rewrite it. Mm -hmm. we I rewrite it. it. Yeah. And at the very end scene when uh, Vince Young scores a touchdown, that's when the file gets uploaded. And uh, everybody uh, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, that's my rewrite. I get the feeling yours is going to be based around your conspiracy theory. I like that. That's, that's actually a good one. Because you know, those type of those type of movies, it's, it sort of reminds me of like the Last Boy Scout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same idea. Just like the game is almost a secondary part of my movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, rewrite it, Frank. What do you got? Um, my thing is uh. It's sort, of, it's sort of be like a he got game or something like that. Like I, I'm gonna go that way. Reggie Bush gets paid off, you know, and uh, he has to risk the game and, and his NFL career, to save his so family. Reggie Bush is being paid off. Uh, who's paying him off? I think the same people that's been paying him off for years, you know, and then they ask him to take a dive in this game. Mafia? Are we talking mafia or NCAA people? I'll go mafia because you know what? Mafia. I, 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 
never realizing something about sports, you know? The reason why sports is a lot because we need the gambling, you know? Oh, yeah. People are, people are, like, I was watching uh, Blood In, Blood Out. A lot of the money they made was gam- sports betting inside prisons. So, you so know, Reggie like, Bush is being paid off by the mafia, and he's got to lose the Rose Bowl? He got he got to lose the Rose Bowl. <laughs> and he has to just rigged the whole thing, you know? USC is just... That's, that's what I'm thinking, you know? Yeah. How about what if the mafia has, like, Reggie Bush's dad hostage or something? Maybe. We, yeah, we need, they need some leverage in, the, in, uh, in on them. And then – that's a good one right there, you know? And yeah, they, yeah. And they just, Reggie Bush's dad is a hostage. Uh, and then the they – men- And maybe they mention, like, maybe Michael Jordan. He's like, hey, you don't want your dad to be like Michael Jordan's dad. And then they just ask oh, some other right. conspiracy. You know, right. Michael Jordan didn't, didn't give up on that Phoenix game. He's supposed to take. He's supposed to take a dive. You know, and he was like, "Fuck that." Right. So they they have some leverage. They have some history to so it. They, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mm. maybe, maybe. So Reggie Bush is paid off. Well, how does it end? How do you? Uh, does Reggie Bush throw the game? Does he find a way to save his dad? How do you end this? I think. Uh, Oh, that's a good one. I, I think he throws the game, and then no, actually, I I think he does, he doesn't. At the end, um, he can't throw the game, and then USC wins, and then they end up killing his dad. <laughs> that's it. They kill him. Actually, actually, actually <laughs> they they do your they do your thing. You know, they they do the play action fake. Okay. And they get that down. They get the first down. They draw out the clock, and then Reggie's Reggie's like fuck. My dad's dead. And then <laughs> you, you find out at the end of the thing, Reggie Bush steals money from the thing. Whatever. His dad died. Like fucking... Whatever. Dad's dead. <laughs> I would say you have a solid three acts in this so far, Frank. <laughs> That's true. No we ransom have, movie. We have to rewrite it a gang of times, you know? No, no ransom movie. No hostage movie really ends with a hostage dying. So really, this could be the first one. What about if, like, the FBI is also on the case? Like, they're trying to, like, break in and rescue the dad. But they need more time. So they keep, like, radioing. You know how, like, the QB has the earpiece? What if Reggie Bush has an earpiece and they keep radioing to Reggie Bush and they're like, we need you to, do- we need you to stall. Stall the game. So Reggie Bush <laughs> is, like, you know, like, running out of bounds after, like, a two-yard game when he had the whole field wide open. Pete Carroll's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, it didn't look good. It didn't look good. It didn't look good out there. He's calling timeouts from the field to delay him. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. What about that? Yeah. Um, that, I mean, that could be – I think we got a hit. Nah. We, we, yeah, we, we, that's we, that's very dark. Hit, maybe. That might be – A true crime. Yeah. True crime Rose Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, another rewrite. Yeah, we went totally dark on this rewrite, whereas last time we made a couple Disney – uh, fluff pieces. <laughs> well, we did a <laughs> Disney movie the last time. This one's a yeah, that's right. This was Sundance. It was, was uh, yeah. <laughs> These are getting the Sundance baby Rose Bowl. The ro- the real Rose Bowl story. Mm, yeah, maybe your Reggie Bush one can be called Play Action Fake. Ah, we'll work on that. that. Yeah. All right, Frank. Final thoughts on this game. Final thoughts. Um, still to this day, the greatest college football game I've ever seen in my life. I saw that in a lot of the comments. This is the greatest game for you, you think, huh? It, it, it's just, it was so crazy. And then the fact that, you know, there's no championships in L.A. for football. Has L.A. ever ever won a, a football chip, Super Bowl? L.A. Raiders, you mean? Like or L.A. Right sports? Uh, the Raiders yeah. have won two. <clears throat> as, as the L.A. Raiders? Yeah, yeah, as L.A. Raiders. Okay. Uh, no Rams, though, you're right. So, I think Rams. the L.A. Raiders are the Rams only had a chance that one year. They had a chance. They San had a Diego, chance. Los Angeles Chargers could be in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, this game, like, my final thought is it's kind of a bummer. It's the end of an era. They lose. Then USC is, like, dismantled. All the NCAA regulations. It's kind of like, all right, this is a bowing out of football at USC for a while. And it ended on such a good game in the opposite way. So a little bit of like, you know, exit, exit stage left football. It was the end of a dynasty, right? Yeah. But Reggie Bush is now welcome back into USC athletics now. The sanctions have been 
have served their term so he can go give us uh, speeches and stuff now. <laughs> no. What about if they, since Reggie Bush is allowed back, what if they recreate the play one time, like on the field, with Reggie Bush and Matt Leinard, and uh, that would be something. I could, I could go home happy. I, I think they would do it because they got nothing better to do with their lives. They're just rich millionaires now. They're <laughs> No. I say they do it. I say they do it. That could happen. Well, well, this was a good good game, Frank. Good suggestion. Hey, thanks, Patrick. If I could come up with another one, let's let's do another one. Uh, yeah, let's keep it going. We got a lot of ideas. What's? Let's see. We did we did baseball. We did football. Have you done uh, game seven of the Lakers Celtics? Let's put that on the list. I'm uh, I'm interested. All right, that, Frank. That was a good one. That was, that was another crazy day for me. Okay. I was doing a lot of praying that day. A lot of praying. <laughs> you heard you heard Frank prayed on this day. <laughs> I was praying hard on that one. That, that, that game was – if you watch it and you're not a Laker or Celtics – or actually a Celtics. If you're not a Lakers fan, that's probably the most – the worst game you've ever seen in the history of basketball. <laughs> it was well, so this bad, part, right? This, this Zoom cast is going dark in many directions. You, you're, right, uh, like, we had a dark yeah. movie rewrite. You're praying. You, got, you were sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. It's a feel good. It might be, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll ask us to make a documentary on this, like the Bulls yeah. one. Like, me, we'll for the my, me for my apartment and you in your car. Hey, there you go. This is the beginning. Yeah. That's, how, that's how these things start, right, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> We're planning the seed, Frank. All right. It was a pleasure yeah. to see you, too. And uh, you, you have a great day. Thank you for having me on your show. It's... Well. That's the episode, everyone. I told you it got a little crazy. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the feedback. And keep listening. I've got more stuff coming. Sports, TV, movies, maybe some other stuff too. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.